Again, a skilled opponent can use his elbow as an effective defense. Building up one's strength and fitness is the key to developing strong, hard fists. And the eyes must be fast. Observing and reacting to small moving objects helps to quicken the movement and response of the eyes. All this is part of the basic training to strengthen the body of a boxer who often needs to fight at close range. Another part of development of the body is the practice of using fists, feet, knees and elbows in defense and attack. This requires attaining proficiency in technique and timing. Correct defense and attacking technique is an art to be mastered. When not on the defense, the boxer must step forward and attack and in doing so he has the advantage of both power and technique. An effective attack can induce fear or submission in an opponent who may be hurt. If the attack is especially severe, the opponent may become unconscious or even die. The specific target of an attack requires careful timing and consideration as to which body weapon to use. Whenever an attack is carried out, it must produce results. The fighter must, therefore, learn all the nerve points on the body, which are the most important and which are the most vulnerable. For example, the fist strikes the chin and the foot connects with the opponent's neck as he lurches forward, or the knee is aimed at the opponent's chest. In this context, the various points of importance on the body include behind the ears, the point of the chin, the jaw, the temple, neck, abdomen, the solar plexus, the sternum, shins, ribcage, pubic area, and outer thigh. The parts of the body used by the fighter to attack at close range are 1. The head, used against weak points such as the chest, nose, face, and chin. 2. The fist, used against weak points such as the face, behind the ears, the neck, the solar plexus, the ribcage, and the chest. 3. The elbow, used against parts such as the chest, feet, chin, and neck. It can be as effective as the fist. 4. The knee, used to cause severe damage to parts such as the chest wall, abdomen, and ribcage. And 5. The foot and entire length of the shin, used to kick at the chest or any part of the opponent's body within reach. Eyes are also very vulnerable to blows with a hard weapon such as a fist. If timed correctly, a blow to the eyes is very effective. As well as having a thorough knowledge of all body weapons, the boxer must know all points of the body which are either weak or vulnerable to attack to be able either to protect them when on the defensive or to target them when attacking. The main points are one the area from the chin to behind the ears. An attack on this area can result in unconsciousness. 2. Abdomen, solar plexus, and sternum. These are the weakening points. 3. The ribcage and soft bones are also weak spots. 4. The testicles. A blow to this area cuts the breath and induces weakness. 5. Outer thigh. Blows on the muscles of the outer thighs can render them tender and painful. 6. Inner and outer shin around or near the knees. The tendons and muscles can easily be damaged and sprained. 7. The shins. The shin bones are easily broken. To be effective when the boxer attacks, each part of the body must be strong and able to resist the impact of striking the target. Every part of the body must be strong enough to enable the boxer to defend and attack, both forwards and backwards. The boxer must learn to protect himself against attack and not to suffer injury. This is the secret of defense. When an opportunity arises, the method of effectively slowing down or stopping an attacking opponent uses both defensive and counter-attacking moves, employing the fists, knees, feet or elbows. The art of Muay Thai, therefore, lies both in defense and attack. In ancient times, learning to box meant having to practice all of the basics before moving on to the main techniques, 
which were considered part of the advanced practice because of their deadly accuracy and effectiveness and combination of attack and follow-up. Attack should aim for a deadly strike. A follow-up makes it more effective. To attack effectively, making use of the important vulnerable points on the body, the boxer must aim for a deadly strike. To learn and practice Muay Thai is not an easy task. It requires, first, a love of boxing. Second, having the mind of a boxer. Third, an understanding of the art of boxing. Fourth, patience, application, and dedication. Fifth, a thorough understanding of the basics. And sixth, an ability to graduate to developing the skills required for the main techniques. These require first learning the basic techniques which cover use of the fists, elbows, knees and feet which must be learned correctly and applied in the proper sequence. Step 4, feet. Step 3, fists. Step 2, knees. Step 1, elbows. Each step must be practiced until it becomes almost second nature. If it is executed wrongly, the balance is broken and the counter move cannot be applied in time. Muay Thai, therefore, requires a strong body and a clear mind. It also requires concentration, focus and constant practice to develop power and fast reflexes. Both the first and the follow-up strikes must also be practiced repeatedly. Practice methods often begin with shadow boxing, using a coconut palm or a post erected in a suitable area, such as a punching bag. A further method of practicing is marking a large triangle in the practice area in which are drawn three numbered circles, each three paces apart, to serve as bases from which to practice basic moves. Timing is most important and the following points must be borne in mind. First, timing three involves boxing by leading forward, at the same time placing the foot in circle number three, using the fist and foot of the same side. Two, timing one involves placing the right foot in circle number two. If the boxer is practicing by punching straight ahead, with the right foot, number three leading, he then switches positions as follows. A. He counts one with the left foot in circle number one. B. He counts two with his right foot in circle number three, which is in front. C. He then counts three and throws a straight punch with his left. His left foot placed on the ground in circle number three. His front leg is slightly bent and his back leg fully extended and his body is in a slightly crouched position. He boxes alternatively right and left, increasing speed and keeping the legs well spaced. The pacing and timing of all movements must be perfected before the boxer can progress to the other main and supplementary techniques. When boxing, the boxer must always remember the following. Be strong of mind. Do not be easily deterred. Don't become angry or careless, which will cause you to fall into your opponent's trap. Be considerate, but always maintain your guard. Never show signs of weakness, which may lead to defeat. Don't follow the gaze of your opponent too intently or for too long. Just watch your opponent to anticipate his next move. If you suffer injury, don't reveal your feelings and continue with your attack to win. When sparring with your opponent, try to judge his likely move. When confrontation occurs, a strong mind is needed. Maintain your focus on winning. When practicing basic foot movements, getting within your opponent's guard is an obvious objective. 
It's like gaining entrance to the enemy stronghold to see what's inside. How you approach your opponent and the posture you adopt will determine how well you can undermine his confidence. Using the galloping horse stance can be very effective, as can the walking tiger stance. Each part of the body signals attack. Practice of these movements requires careful synchronization of timing. Each movement must be carried out firmly and deliberately, like a tiger stalking its prey and ready to pounce. Here the firmness of the feet and the steady rhythm of the movements indicate a first-class boxer. Exponents of Muay Thai must practice both attacking and defensive foot movements to ensure that they maintain their balance and coordination. Foot movements. First, the feet must be spaced and elbows length apart, facing outwards with the weight on the left foot. Second, the feet move over one another a palm's length apart. And third, the upper body leans forward at an angle of 45 degrees. These positions must be remembered by the boxer and practiced well, both in attack and defense. The relative distances must also be maintained. Method of practicing the main moves and the other supplementary moves of Muay Thai. When practicing the main moves and techniques of Muay Thai, close supervision is required to ensure correct timing and striking distance to the opponent's weak points so that contact is made the first time. The trainer must exercise patience and care. He must be composed, but he must insist on discipline. And he must also set an excellent example using the skills he has acquired to pass on his knowledge to the student boxer. Practicing Muay Thai Tricks Before practicing the skills of Muay Thai, you must start from the correct guarding posture, from the standing posture. Here's how to stand when preparing to fight. First, the correct stance when having to defend is for the arms to be raised up in a closing manner. There are closing, sweeping, and opening postures. The arms raised stance is a basic posture to protect yourself from the attacking fists of the opponent. Muay Thai Action 1 is called the Zigzag or Salap Phan Pla. This action is the basic movement used when defending against and avoiding hard punches from the opponent. To practice, A, the attacker sends a straight left punch and steps his left foot forward. The target is the face of the defender. Move the right foot back one step and lean to the right at about a 60 degree angle. The weight is on the feet. Now, lift your left arm and sweep the opponent's fist from your face. Punch straight at your opponent's eyes or lift your right arm to sweep the opponent's fist away and quickly grab the opponent's upper right arm. The defender's left hand catches the opponent's left wrist which is called the catch the arm trick or raise your right hand to sweep the opponent's left punch then throw your left punch from below into the opponent's chin. If the opponent uses a right punch, you have to use your left hand to protect your face while sending a right punch from below. If the opponent uses a right punch, you defend in the opposite way. Paksa Wakran, or the bird bursts from the nest, is our next technique. This is most suitable for fighting at close range. This is important in leading to use your elbow and preparing for the next step. To practice, A, the attacker punches at the face of the defender with a straight left, together with stepping his left foot forward. B, the defender then hurriedly steps his left foot forward, a little bit to the left, toward the left hand of the attacker. The defender next leans over at an angle of about 60 degrees with his weight on his left foot. Then the defender